In part two of section 4.1, polynomial functions, we'll talk about finding the zeros of polynomial functions and how does that relate, the zeros relate to the x-intercepts um, and how the x-intercepts look on the graph. Okay, so this is about the zeros, x-intercepts, and the graph of polynomial functions. Okay, so let's actually start off with an example that I can use to kind of explain some concepts here. Okay, and we want to find the zeros of this function. Find the zeros of this function, and it will be factored for us already. Okay, and you remember, when you're finding the zeros, what you're trying to actually find are the numbers that when you plug them into the function, you get zero out. Okay, so that's what the zero is. So to find them, what you do is you take the actual function that you just wrote down, and you set it equal to zero and solve it using any of the methods that you know. Okay, so let's see, x plus five to the third power times x minus four times x plus one to the second power equals zero. By the way, this polynomial has x to the third power, three, there's another one, four, and then five, six. This is a degree six polynomial, okay? Not that that's important, but I figured I'd point that out. Okay, um, so remember the zero product property is what you would use when you have something that's split up into multiplication set equal to zero, like we have here, right? This times itself three times, times this, times this, times itself twice, lots of multiplication, all equals zero. First of all, what does this mean? That means x plus five times x plus five times x plus five, times x minus four, times x plus one, twice, x plus one, equals zero. Okay, so you can see it there, there are six parentheses, this is a degree six polynomial, because if you multiplied all those x's together, you would have x, one, two, three, four, five, six times. Okay, anyway, zero product property says you take each parenthesis and set it equal to zero, of course, I would never do it this way, right? This is gonna take way more effort than it's worth, but I am going to use this to make a point. So here we go. We have six separate equations, and if I solve them, I get negative five for the first one, negative five for the second one, negative five for the third one, four for the fourth one, negative one for the fifth one, and negative one for the sixth one. Okay, I have six solutions. They correspond with the degree six, by the way. Six solutions, but I have some duplicates, okay? And so there's a way we can handle that. There's a certain word we need to use here. So our solutions are negative five with multiplicity three. That means that you got negative five three times. And that's actually important when we get to the graphing of it. Okay, or talking about the graph at least. X equals four, we'll say with multiplicity one because it only happened one time. And X equals negative one with multiplicity two. Right, this should add up to the degree six, okay? And so this would be my complete solution, all of them. All right, so not only do I list the three unique solutions that I found, I also told how many times I got each of them. All right, so what does that have to do with the graph? So we solved it, we found the zeros. What does it have to do with the graph? So let's talk about the x-intercepts. A separate question here, but we'll talk about it here. Remember, what we did. Apparently plugging in negative five will give you a zero for y. That's an x-intercept, right? Plugging in four gives you zero for y. Plugging in negative one will give you zero for y. Okay, well there's this theorem that we're going, going to use, okay? And basically the idea is that you look at the multiplicities if the multiplicities are 
is odd. Right, so in this case, three and one. If it's odd, we'll say the graph crosses the x-axis at that point. Running out of room here, there we go. So if the multiplicity is odd, it crosses the x-axis. If the multiplicity is even, the graph will touch, but not cross, the x-axis at that point. Okay, and so let's go back to this example here. If I plotted these three points with the graph cross or touch at negative five, zero. It's odd, it would cross. At four, zero, it would cross because one is odd, All right? I'm looking at the multiplicities now, right? I'm not looking at those numbers, okay? And then at negative one, it would even touch the x-axis not cross. Okay, so what am I talking about? What does that look like? All right, so I'm going to sketch the graph here from what I know. Uh, remember in behavior, I did say that the leading term was x to the sixth. I'm not asking you to figure that out right now, but just x to the sixth is the leading term. So that means my leading coefficient is a positive one, which means the graph will go up to the right. And the degree is even, which means that the left side will match the right side. So it'll also go up. Okay, then we list these three points, negative five, four, and negative one. So here's, so let's say negative five is right there. That's a point. Negative one is right here. That's a point. And then four is over here somewhere. That's a point. You play a weird game of connect the dots here. Okay, at negative five, the graph will cross. So I start, I know it has to end up going up to the left, so I'm gonna start there, and I'm gonna cross, cross at negative five, zero. Okay, at negative one, it's going to touch and not cross. So what I'm going to do there is go up and then just reflect off of or bounce off of the x-axis there and go back down. At four, it's going to cross again. There we go, now connect the dots there. There we go. Okay, so the graph looks something like that. Okay, that's what I'm talking about, whether it crosses or touches. All right, let's do another example and we'll just put it all together from the start. All right, so we have f of x equals x plus one half, x plus seven squared, x plus five. Okay, remember to find the zeros, you set the whole thing equal to zero. and you solve that, that'll give you the x values that if you plug in will give you y zero. Okay, zero product property says that I can take each of these and set them equal to zero. Technically I have two sets of this x plus seven here, but I'm not gonna write it twice. I'm just gonna remember that my answer is going to have multiplicity two. So we have x equals negative one half with multiplicity one, right, only happened once. X equals negative seven with multiplicity two, that one happened twice. And negative five, multiplicity one. Okay, so those are my three, well, four solutions. Let's talk about the graph. Let's see if I can 
Okay, so now the graph, the x-intercepts specifically. We have three x-intercepts, negative one-half comma zero, negative seven zero, negative five zero. And then of those three, we look at the multiplicities to determine if they cross or touch. At negative one-half, the multiplicity is odd. Remember, odd means cross. Negative seven, the multiplicity is two. Two is even. Even means touch. Negative five, multiplicity is one. One is odd, so we're back to cross. Okay, so that's what the x-intercepts would look like. Okay. Here's another one. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bit different though. We're going to have f of x equals x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus nine. Okay, and this one is not factored, right? So I will set it equal to zero like I normally would but I can't just use a zero product property. It's not factored. Okay, and it's x to the fourth. So this is one of those I wanna go over because it's possible that you'll see one like this and you can solve this one like a quadratic. Okay, the reason you can solve it like a quadratic is because let's picture this for a second. If you can fill in any variable here, it fits the x squared x constant model, right? Which case you can treat it like a quadratic. Although I can't just put x there. Instead, I will have to put x squared there. Okay, if I think about it like that, x squared is taking the place of x. So you have something squared minus 10 times that same something plus 9. That's a quadratic. Okay, at least you can treat it like a quadratic. So now I'll factor it, treating x squared like my x. Okay, x squared, x squared. All right, so I need two numbers that multiply together that equal positive nine, but add up to negative 10. And I'm sure you'll figure that out if you think about it long enough, negative one and negative nine. Okay, so I factored it just using x squared. Now I can factor each of these individually, right? Because isn't x squared minus one a difference of squares? It factors to be x plus one, x minus one. Same thing is true with x squared minus nine, difference of squares, x plus three, x minus three. So I use quadratic methods to factor this quartic function. If I set them all equal to zero using the zero product property, I get four individual equations and I get four unique solutions. And so I'm not gonna write out the multiplicity for all these because they're all one, right? They're all the same thing. But that would be the multiplicities for all of them. If I wanted to identify the x-intercepts, there would be negative one, zero, one, zero, negative three, zero, and three, zero. And since the multiplicity is one for all of them, it's odd for all of them. So the graph will cross the x-axis at each of those four. Okay, I wanna do one more example. Uh, this time, Uh, I want to factor another type. I think we're on example, is it four now? Okay, yeah, we're on example four. And this one will say f of x, oops, f of x equals three x cubed plus x squared minus 48x minus 16. So we have a, um, it's a cubic function and it has four terms, okay? And this one we're gonna factor by grouping. Okay, well, let me write it out as an equation first. So, oops, third power plus x squared minus 48x 
minus 16 equals 0. I'm going to group together the first two terms. I'm going to make this plus a negative so I can group those two together. I'm going to factor out a common factor of x squared. Factor out a negative 16 common factor. Okay, so 3x plus 1 and 3x plus 1 match. So I'm going to put 3x plus 1 as a common factor. x squared minus 16 as a common factor. x squared minus 16 is difference of squares, so 3x plus 1, x plus 4 x minus 4 equals 0. There are my three parentheses equal to 0. Okay, so that's, oops, factor by grouping. All right, you might want to go back and review that um, when we went over factoring. That's one of our techniques. Okay, so set all the individual parentheses equal to 0 and solve them one at a time. So the first one, subtract 1 from both sides. 3x equals negative 1. Divide both sides by 3. I get negative 1 third. Multiplicity 1. Subtract 4 from both sides. I get x equals negative 4. Multiplicity 1. Add 4 to both sides. I get positive 4. Multiplicity 1. Okay, and then if I look at the intercepts, of course, since multiplicity is 1 for all of them, as it usually will be, the graph will cross the x-axis at those three points. Okay, that would be section 4.1.